fish to stand in. This can't be the greatest shortstop of all time. Too tall? Too short. <laughs> Short stop. Oh. The numbers look good. We haven't ran anybody up. We got any first timers here with us today? Welcome aboard, both of you. All right. This is our infield course. We started two days ago as uh, Wiley veterans. Yesterday I told you a story. We've talked about defense wins championships and that we need to make the routine plays. It's a hitter's game. We throw it underhand. We really don't want to extend the inning. Don't want to give another team five, six outs. And we talked uh, that the older we get, the more important defense gets. 65 and over, 70 over. You got to be able to make those plays. I think there is a certain age they add an extra fielder out there for you, right? Is that 65? 65 and up on SSU. On ISSA, 70 up on SSU. We get that 11th fielder. But anyway, I told you yesterday about my team and how I was fortunate enough to play with a team that I think has the best defense in the country. And what position did I tell you about yesterday that I said we had the best Short player in the country? Short stop. I told you we had the best shortstop in the country. <laughs> Senior softball. And I think he's probably from 40 and up, he's probably the best in the country. So guess what? He's here. He's here. All right. Happy so, birthday. Wanted, wanted to thank you. My teammate, Brad. Yesterday. Yeah, yesterday, I, thank you. I want to introduce my teammate. 51 yesterday. And good friend, oh, Brad Stillwell. He's a young my pup kids are at 51. Older than <laughs> <laughs> 99. What do you want me to do? <laughs> Nothing you can do about it. This is Brad Stillwell. He lives in Orlando, Florida. He coaches fast pitch women's girls. Play. Girls, yeah, there's still girls in. And uh, every, it, it's some awesome stuff because every time I get on Facebook, he's talking about another one of his girls that just signed or committed to a college to play college baseball or softball. And that's, as coaches at the high school, that's our goal. We want as many of our kids to experience college softball or college baseball as we can. All right, we think that's a great way to get a college education is to have that intercollegiate sport with it as well. So I'm telling he's the best of the best. I, I heard about him before I had met him, and I'm glad he's been on my team since I've played senior softball. Uh, I can pitch the ball inside and watch people try to do funny stuff with it to try not to hit it to shortstop just because he's standing out there. <laughs> All right, he's a difference maker. And, uh, and I told you yesterday when he wasn't here. So what makes Brad so good, number one is his arm strength. All right, because he's got a strong arm and accurate, and that's what we're gonna work on today, my segue in, because he's got a strong and accurate arm, guess what he can do? He can play deeper. And as a hitter, when you look out there and you see that shortstop deep, what's that do to you? Yeah, it makes you wanna bunt. But there's rules, you can't bunt in softball, all right? So because he can play deeper, that gives him more range which takes my 5-6 hole away, or it could take my middle hole away, all right? And not only can he play out there, he is smart enough that if it's not hit hard, what's he do? Charge it. He charges it. Instinct. He don't have to be told that, all right? So if they do try to lay off and feather one, he'll come get it. He can throw it on the run with anybody. He's not afraid to get on his belly. All right, I'm working on that as he gets to 53 or 54. I hope he, I hope he hits the turf well, west. Pay for that night, I promise you. But he still gets up, but he, he is hurting the next day. So anyway, Brad's going to jump in with us today. He's going to help us. We talked a little bit about the throwing shoulder earlier. Some of you were there. We're going to talk more about throwing here today. We're going to get some throwing in. All right. You've heard a whole bunch out of me. I'm going to turn it over to Brad here in just a second. I'm still here with you. We're going to split up and do some throwing drills. We'll really work on because some of our throwing is bad. bad. First basements, do you agree with me? <laughs> they haven't quite hit the first basements in the chest. They've made them work hard on their picks and everything. So anyway, uh, we're going to get started here. And uh, Brad Stillwell, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. Hey. All right, ladies and gentlemen. I um I have to kind of work, so I wasn't able to be out here Thursday and Friday. So, um, for the record, yeah, I'll get there. It was like the guy, this, the team that I play with, uh, Chris Walker is uh, one of our sponsors. I played with him 10, 12 years ago in a conference. And he called me up one day and said, hey, Brad, are you ready to play 50s? I said, 
Chris, I'm only 47. Please slow down. <laughs> when I get there, I promise you I'm going to play with you. Okay? Um, so, pretty much the philosophy behind fielding is I, I've been doing it a very, 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 very long time. Um, middle league to, to college to a year and a half of the pros, and then I literally got into slow pitch while I was playing in high school. I got into fast pitch, slow pitch, softball, playing shortstop. I've been doing it for 51, so I've been doing it forever. Um, the one thing that I can say, and he's right, arm strength is key, right? You can manipulate the field with not a great arm and you can read the ball and things like that. But to me, the footwork is the most important thing. To me, when it comes to footwork, it gets you to the ball, it sets you on the ball, and it allows you to throw the ball better if your feet are right. Um, that's what I've always that's what I've always believed. Um, I will tell you this too, to this day, I play wall ball. So if you ever never, never played the game of wall ball where you take a tennis ball and you stand five feet from a wall and blast it at the wall and catch a ball, that's what I, I still do it to this day. I even have a, a wall and I put it in my, at my house to do this one. Okay, Can so- you do it with a glove or your bare hand? Bare hand. Bare light hand. doesn't matter? No, no. I mean, I'll put my glove on it, I'll get a baseball or a softball and I'll bounce a softball up there. But, and then when I'm catching it, I catch it with one hand, I don't catch it with two. Okay, that's just so I can get my glove better. The one issue I have with my girls, and maybe you guys don't, they're 11, 12 years old is, when they're young, they're taught, catch with two hands, catch with two hands. Two hands on ground balls, two hands on pop-ups. Everything else, you, two hands is slow compared to one. If I'm reaching for a ball and I gotta go up and he, he worked forehand and backhand, right? Yes. If I go over with two hands, it's shorter and slower. If I go with one, I can reach farther and faster, right? So when you guys are out there doing that and, and, and taking ground or taking ground balls or line drives or whatever, unless it's a pop up and a ground ball, just try to see if you can catch it with one hand. I see some people still out there trying to catch everything with two. That's another thing that drives me a little crazy anyway. Um, he worked and talked about footwork, all right? Um, you talk about the triangle, right? Yeah. Everybody ever understand that triangle? Everybody understand the triangle? That when you go out to get a ball, you try to create a triangle. So you try to create a triangle when you're catching a ball. I see a lot of this today. That ball's gonna come up and bite you in the mouth. Right? That's the triangle that gets you out there, right? Um, pretty much the thing that we're gonna go over is the stuff that he's talked about. I'll add in a little bit, but I love infield. They put me in the outfield. Ah, I'm okay at it. I'm not so good. I don't, I'm not great at judging the ball. Um, put me in the infield and, and I'm, I'm doing good. I'm, I'm where I belong. All right. Uh, I really don't have a lot to say because he pretty much kind of has been going over it the last two days about footwork and throwing. Uh, I'll give you some pointers today to make you help you throw a little harder. I'm a big believer on long toss. If your arms aren't strong, long toss. It makes your arm stronger. I mean, Everybody knows what that is, right? Playing catch at a longer distance. Longer than distance. 60 feet. And, and go try to 90 not, feet, go to 120 feet. Yeah. Work on throwing the ball farther. Trying to loft, you're trying to get it out there. Okay? It does strengthen up your arm, make you a little stronger. It does make your arm a little quicker. I'm a big believer on that. If you don't have a strong arm, that's your best bet. Okay? Especially at our ages. It's not like we're going to wake up tomorrow and throw 90. But if we can start working and stretching out those muscles and stretching out that arm, it will help you throw harder. Okay? Um, All right, so let's go from fielding it, Brad, to throwing position. Okay. All right, let's go from the triangle. We just caught it nicely, butt down, hands out in front. Now we got to get ourselves moving towards our target and get our throwing arm up. So help us with that. All right, so I have a, I'll, I'll go around, but. They were picking on me. We were in Vegas, and I had a ground ball, and then the photographer took a picture of me feeling a ground ball, which, you know, it's a great, like, mechanically, it's great. But my tongue was hanging out. <laughs> I'm like Michael Jordan again, apparently. But they always tell me my tongue's hanging out. I said, no, it's not. Well, they got a photo of my tongue hanging out, so I guess I can't argue with them. All right? The footwork I'm getting, and this is what we're talking about footwork. If your arm's not strong, being quick is almost as good, right? So if I'm going for a ball like this and I'm going to catch it, when I come up, I want to make sure that I bring my glove to my side and I get my body square as possible, as quick as possible, okay? If you come up and go like this, it's going to be hard to get that forward momentum to throw that ball. 
So when you guys are down catching the ball and you're here like this, you want to try to stay as low as you can. Okay? All right? And then when you, if you have to make that extra throw where he was talking about yesterday, it doesn't matter whether you go back or front, but you want to make sure you get there. Uh, anybody play baseball when they were kids? You remember the eyeball? The ankle, they always say the eyeball, point, look at the, take your eye, ankle like an eyeball and point it to your target. So when you go to step, you want to try to point that ankle. You don't want to step straight, you want to try to turn that body, right? Because you want to get your shoulder square to the throw. If I'm trying to throw it to him and I go like this, it's going to be hard. But if I'm here like this, I'm on target to throw to him. So there's an eyeball on the inside of his right ankle and he wants to point that towards his target. Because I'm here like this, I'm going boom like that. I'm turning my foot to get my body to square quickly. And that's the footwork I'm talking about. You come up straight and then turn and turn, it's taking you extra steps, right? My belief is, depending on the runner, this guy runs pretty quick still. My belief on the runner is, for every step you take, they get two, because they're at full speed running. So if you're taking two steps, he's got four steps. What's the average steps to get to first base for us? 11 steps, maybe, if you're quick. So I've got to eliminate that. Then i got to throw it across the field. It's another couple steps. So the quicker you can get in and out of your stance and throw that ball, the better it will help you. Uh, to piggyback what he's saying, because I've played against Brad for years, being with him, is he catches balls on the side right here, running this way, not two-handed. He catches it one hand, but he can get his feet in this throwing position faster than anybody. Some of the reasons because he's short on the ground and his footwork is bad. He uses it to his advantage. I do, I do, I do. He uses it to his advantage. He'll pop up and I mean, already be ready like a catcher throw you out. But he can go from here to hop like this so fast, where everybody else catches it has to regather. I mean, that's what makes him an advanced infielder. His footwork is phenomenal. So a good drill to do, whether, whether, you do, whether you're flexible or not flexible, or not quick, or whatever it may be. A good drill that I do, and to this day I do with the girls, I go like this, pull my glove up, and I hop to the side. And then if I have to take a step, I take a step. Okay? We're going to start with that drill here in a second. You're going to grab a partner again, you're going to grab a ball. We're going to have half of us down the left field line, half of us down the right field line. Throwing itself, we talked about it over there. We like to throw the ball if we can across the four seams. All right, three fingers on top. If you got small hands, I don't know if there's many people that can still do two fingers on softball, but three fingers is good. Three fingers on top, your pinky becomes your guide finger and it sits on the side so the ball doesn't come out the side of your ring finger. Yeah, three, I'm three and a pinky. Okay, we talked a little bit earlier, we got to get the elbow. go and you're going to pop, get it out of your glove, get the ball up, hesitate, and then we're going to throw from there. We're going to break it down into two motions. After we do that a couple times, then we'll do it all in one smooth motion. All right, one thing I want to fill in here is he's talking about throwing. Um, it's more prevalent in girls' fast pitch games compared to baseball, but girls, when they're young, and it drives me crazy, is they're taught to throw with a dead arm. That means they get the ball like this, they go to throw, they put their arm down like this, and they just throw. Right? <laughs> a couple reasons that's a really bad decision. Yeah, all right. Dead front arm. Front arm. The dead front arm. Sorry, the arm, this arm's doing nothing. So I'm there throwing. So number one, you're putting a lot of stress on that shoulder. He'll tell you about all the little muscles in there. You are putting excruciating stress on those muscles by just whipping it with your elbow. Okay? The other reason why the, the dead arm is, is it's not as accurate. It's not. Okay? So when you go out, like he said, get that arm up. When you go to throw, right, the philosophy, my philosophy is that you're grabbing a rope and you're pulling the rope back to your body, which then retransfers this shoulder here and then makes that shoulder pull through. You're going to get more power that way. You're going to get more accurate that way. And it's going to take a lot of less stress off that. When you teach pitching, if you ever watch Major League Baseball players, when they go off like this, go off like this, they don't go like this and throw, you see them, they'll pull that glove back, they'll body will bow and they'll fling. That's the idea. So when you guys are throwing today, do me a favor, get into that position, okay? And then when you go to throw, it's together, simultaneous, that when you pull, you pull. Don't talk and then pull. Try to do it together, okay? So it's a pull. It's a pull. It's a pull. It's not dropping down. It's not dropping down. You're pulling it you back to your body. Just, just think of you're going to kind of show it, and then you're going to 
going to spin. You're going to spin, and you're going to, instead of spinning with just the back side, you're going to take pull the front side back. And bring in those same obliques we talked about in the beginning, they work in, in rolling. That same expression I use, the faster you spin, the farther it goes in hitting. Same thing in throwing. It's a rotational activity. The faster you spin, the harder you're going to throw the ball. All right? So it's all about pointing your front shoulder. Grab your partner. We're going to throw down the left field line, right field line. Let's get after it. Let's get some throwing in. Grab a ball. 